Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Vicious and welcome to a brand new Photoshop tutorial. Today I am going to be showing you how to be adding highlights and shadows to your image using the dodge and burn tool that you get in Photoshop. And I'm going to be showing you a very specific technique that's non-destructive and therefore the smartest way to use these tools. One of the biggest gaps you have to cross become uh, a master in Photoshop to make it from novice to master is learning non-destructive editing. That really is one of the biggest things I picked up to get good at this. And so that's why I'm going to be bringing you a lot of tutorials like this one to show you smart ways to use your tools so you can get better with your Photoshop. The uh, dodge and burn tool specifically over here, we got the uh, dodge and burn are some of the tools that are hardest to use in my opinion if you don't use a smart method because it's very easy to overdo it and it's very hard to go back and fix if you're painting directly onto your image with it. So real quick, let me go ahead and tell you what they do. I'm going to uh, go ahead and duplicate this layer so I can mess this up. The, uh, the dodge tool basically is your highlights and you can choose the range, the darker colors, the midtones are the brightest colors and your exposure is your strength. I usually stick around 50 to 60 up to you know somewhere higher sometimes and uh, use it just like a paintbrush so you actually would go in and select a brush size and hardness just like you would a paintbrush and then you paint into your image with it so let's go ahead and show you some of that increase my brush size a bit and we got dodge so highlights if I was gonna highlight this image I'd probably you're gonna look for um, natural spots that already are kind of highlighted and brighten them up. Things that you want to accent, so like the eyes, I would definitely go in and do the eyes. When you're working with a photo, you're usually going to go where natural light is already present, and you're going to be making it more dynamic, as if there was a stronger light. If you're working on a sketch or something you drew yourself that doesn't have actual lighting in it, this is how you create your lighting. You, know, you add your shading with this kind of tool. So you paint directly into the image, like this, but what happens if you make any mistake? or you go back later on and you find that you did something too strong or you just don't like it, you can't do anything about it. You can't go and erase it anymore. You can't do anything to it because you've edited the image directly. So here is the big trick to using these tools in a non-destructive way. First of all, here's just a quick before and after what we just did, just so you can see the differences. I'm going to trash that layer, and we're going to create a new layer. On the PC, shift and backspace is the shortcut for a fill layer, and I'm going to fill it with 50% gray. That's a preset you can select. If you're going to do it manually, it's under edit and fill. Now that I have a layer filled with gray, this is the neat part. You have your blending modes. If you put it on soft light, the way soft light works is if it's darker than 50% gray, it darkens the image. If it's lighter than 50% gray, it lightens the image, much like the dodge and burn tool. And now what we actually do is we have an invisible layer here that we can work with. And again, I'll go ahead and show you. I'm just going to paint right here on the face so you can see it clear as day. And I'll even jack up the exposure. And then it'll be easier to show you with actually a burn tool. Now I can sit here and paint on the image just like if I was editing the image directly, but everything is on a layer, not on my image. So I can always go back and edit this. I can do many things that I couldn't do before. First, you can always fade off the effects using the opacity. And that's something you wouldn't be able to do before. If you make a mistake, you can actually just go back and erase it, uh, or you can paint over it with 50% gray. And that's one way to fix it. And the other thing I like about this technique, I'm going to go ahead and refill this real quick with 50% gray. Sometimes I don't like to use a, uh, a soft brush and try to be very, very accurate with what I do. Sometimes I actually use a hard brush and I can use a nice high exposure. And what I can do is just make kind of like really crude uh, marks of what I want to do. And this is way, way crude and way too strong. I'm just kind of making an example here. So I'm painting in here some shadows and you can see that this looks horrible because I didn't use any kind of soft brush and I'm way overdoing the exposure. But now what I can do is I can go into filter, blur, 
Gaussian blur and I can blur that really harsh uh, fill out and make it look natural and therefore I get like a nice shading without all the hard work and that works well depending on what you're doing with your image or what kind of image you're working on so that's really all there is to the tutorial uh, if you want to stick around for just a minute we'll do a real quick actual using it we'll do an example of using it here to make this image look a little bit more dynamic with the lighting so 50 percent gray we need soft light i'm going to bring down the exposure to about 70 right now we're working with shadows so let's go work on shadows zoom in a bit and what we're working on now is just making this look much more dynamic than before like if there was a stronger light on this image And again, since this was a real photo, I'm just kind of working with the natural lighting and the natural highlights and shadows that are already present in here. I'm just sort of making them a little bit stronger. And I'm going to do the opposite real quick with the dodge and we'll go ahead and lower that down to about 60. These tools can be very, very useful. It's just finding the right way to use them. And you know, like you're taking your time with this is the best thing to do. Obviously for a tutorial, I'm just rushing through it to give you an example but you can use these tools um, for a lot of really great effects. Let's see. Might even go actually brighten up the eyes a little bit. And also here. All right, there you go. You won't really see anything different right now because I just did all those changes, but watch what happens when I turn this off and on. Do you see how I made that a much more dynamic photo? It really brings out um, more definition. And that was a very, very crude, uh, very quick adjustment. And now, like I said, we can take this and we can do so much more with it. We can lower the opacity we can blur it if we needed to and you can do things like even um, increase the contrast and kind of actually work with a fine tuning on that so let's do that real quick I'll show you that go to image and adjustments and I'm going to go to brightness and contrast and if I increase the contrast I can actually increase the definition of what I was doing before and I can fade that out with the opacity of course so there you go. That was that tutorial, guys. Another really quick and easy one, but yet very useful techniques. This is one I recommend you definitely remember uh, because it will come in handy for you. If you found it useful, make sure you give the video a thumbs up to say thanks. If you'd like to find more tutorials like this in the future, then subscribe to the channel because I will be working on a lot more tutorials for a lot of different things. So this was Vicious. I appreciate you guys stopping in, and I'll see you next time.